Hi. So I see in forums all the time people asking questions about The Art of Electronics, the book. It is a book that I have and that I use. I am an electrical engineer and uh, so occasionally I need a reference and I pull that one out and uh, I thought I'd talk about it for a little while. Uh, the people that are asking about it are usually either students or makers who are looking for uh, advice on books. Now the art of electronics I feel is geared towards uh, students of electronics, you know, electronics engineering. It uh, is uh, math oriented. It has a lot of details of, on the theory of how the devices work and a lot of those theories are explained with mathematical formulas. The uh, now this is the second edition. It was last updated in 1989. That is the most recent edition available. Uh, so one of the questions that people ask, is the book still relevant? And I think the answer is yes, it is still relevant. If you think about it, the devices, the electronic devices that we have are really the same as what we had in the 1960s. They haven't changed that much. We've just managed to shrink them down and fit more of them on the board. So if you understand the basics of how those those components worked back then, you're going to understand or it's going to be very easy for you to understand the components that we have today. So yeah, I think it is still relevant, but um, the book sells for $170 now and that is pretty pricey and I can understand if people are questioning whether it's really worth it or not. So um, one thing I would throw out there uh, is that there is a first edition available and you can find it used and I've seen it go used for anywhere from two to ten dollars. That's pretty cheap, and my guess is 90% of the information that's in that first edition is also in the second edition, that they probably share about 90% of the same info. So, um, you know, that's an option if you guys are interested and you don't have a lot of cash. You know, I was a student, I understand how it is. Um, now, uh, even the second edition, there are some things in there that, uh, you know, maybe we aren't going to be so interested in anymore. Uh, there's a lot of pages about, say, the uh, Texas Instruments 74LS181, uh, which is a 4-bit ALU chip, and really nobody uses that anymore. But, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, everybody was designing their own computer, so that was something that, you know, people were really into. So there is some information there like that. And, of course, the second edition doesn't go into microcontrollers at all because they were still fairly new when this book, uh, you know, in, in the late 80s, it, that was a developing market. So um, just things to keep in mind. Now, for makers, I would say that this book may be, um, it may be more than what a lot of makers are looking for since there is no mention of microcontrollers and things like that. Um, now, if you've already gone through a number of other books and you're looking to, uh, you know, expand your knowledge, maybe move on to something a little more difficult, then maybe this is the book for you. But I don't think it's for beginners. So, um, the, so anyway, uh, there are some other books that I have that maybe would be an option uh, instead of Art of Electronics. And if anybody's interested, I'll do another video and discuss uh, some of those. I'm also thinking that I may pick up a first edition and just go through the differences between the first and second edition of the Art of Electronics. If you're interested in that, let me know and I'll do more videos. If you're not interested, let me know that too. If this video is no good, then I'll stop doing videos. So uh, I wanted to keep it short and sweet and we're under four minutes. So I uh, hope everybody finds it useful. Thanks a lot.